Good afternoon, everybody. I am Francesca, as you can hear from my accent in English. I'm Italian originally, but I live in Scotland where I'm doing my PhD. Two uh, small uh, assumptions before beginning. The first one is uh, why I decided to present this paper. This is part of my PhD. Uh, I decided to present this paper because I think it could be aligned to the topic of sustainable development. Because in this paper and in my PhD, I'm going to talk about social enterprise. For being aligned, I could discuss for like two hours what's the meaning of social enterprise, and usually academics in conference discuss four hours about the meaning, still the meaning. But I will try to give like a, a definition that it could be different from definition from different countries. Anyway, the, defi the definition in Scotland mainly, and maybe also in Italy, is a, an enterprise with a societal mission that uh, uh, reinvests totally the profits inside the mission. So it's pretty different from the US definition, but this is like the underlying rationale behind them. Since the uh, 1990s, uh, there was a policy recognition of the concept of social enterprise. Uh, if you see UK and the newspaper in UK, it seems that England is one of the most beautiful places where to develop a social enterprise. Italy tried to fight with England for like the first country where there was a law about social enterprise. Policymakers are developing new services, social incubators, financial instruments. Have you never heard about uh, uh, social impact investing, for example, social impact bonds, new regulation, new laws uh, for fostering the development of social enterprise. So it's necessary and there is a request of higher accountability and transparency and demonstration of the impact of social enterprise. And this sort of accountability has been demanded by policymakers, grant makers, financial institutions. A lot of social enterprises uh, have tried to develop different kind of instruments for uh, measuring the impact. However, there is a lack of definition of what's the meaning of social impact, uh, and there is a lack of consistency behind uh, the different uh, scientific instruments. Uh, in fact, the evidence upon which policy initiatives have been based is at best limited. Roy et al. is a systematic literature review that was uh, undertaken uh, one year ago that show up uh, that uh, social enterprise uh, in health, uh, how social enterprise could impact on health, uh, there are not so many evidence of the results. So there is a lack, there is a gap in the research. Therefore, uh, this is the overview of my PhD, I'm beginning just now, in one week, my last year of my PhD. So I undertaking a systematic review for understanding how social enterprise could be different from other providers in health and social care sector, but I'm not going to discuss uh, about, that, about that today, but I'm happy to answer the two different questions about the results. Systematic literature review is a method, method a method used in particular uh, in health uh, for understanding what is the impact of different kind of, uh, for example, policy initiative. And the final goal of my PhD is try to develop and implement a protocol for evaluating a specific social enterprise. For doing this, um, it's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to explain today, it was necessary to develop a conceptual framework of the potential outcomes of a community-based initiatives. So the idea is, uh, how is it possible to develop methods for understanding the impact of a specific social enterprise? I will go very quickly through the methods. Actually, I want to just give an overview of the context. We are talking about Scotland, the north part of UK. It's the same country of UK, even if the last year there was a referendum for the independence. It's pretty different in terms of culture. I didn't believe it because I, I'm Italian, but when I moved there, I understood that there are kind of strong different culture in comparison with England. And I'm talking about a small community north west of Scotland, three hours from Glasgow by train, and Glasgow is the closest city, big city. Uh, 10,000 inhabitants, and there are two peculiarities of this community. One is that 45% uh, of the population suffer of a chronic condition, so uh, different kind of health, chronic condition. And the other peculiarity is uh, that it's a small community, but it's full of social enterprise. So for example, the cinema is a community social enterprise. Uh, and the um, community funded the cinema, because otherwise the other option was driving two hours down to Glasgow for going to the cinema. And this is, this is only one example. So what I did, uh, I took 
uh, social enterprise, they provide the physical activity for people with chronic condition. So they support the people to uh, uh, begin a process of being physical active, maybe after being in a hospital for two months, or maybe because they are inactive since a long, uh, a long time. And they support them in a process uh, of uh, uh, becoming more physical active. I conducted 27 semi-structure interview with beneficiaries, managers, funders, uh, and different partners or different, uh, different uh, uh, organ partner organizations. This is our, the results. So my question were, uh, okay, what's, what's happening? Uh, how these social enterprises uh, supporting and helping you and uh, in different cases and with different stakeholders? So the results are, la are um, listed from the most uh, uh, quoted uh, result uh, that is connectedness, uh, the idea to the, the, to the least quoted that is physical health. Connectedness, the idea that uh, the social enterprise is supporting beneficiary and they make them feel part of something, part uh, of a group uh, uh, that they were not able to feel part of. The second one is self-confidence. The social enterprise, uh, they perceive that are, uh, is supporting people uh, to increase their self-confidence of doing the very simple stuff. For example, looking after grandkids, they were not able to looking after uh, their grandkids because they were not physically active, or they were very shy and they had difficulties to go to the gym because usually the gym is a sort of place very Phys uh, physically fit people go to the gym, so if you are not very physical fit, maybe you feel a barrier. The third one is physical activity, and the different people, people, for example, with uh, COPD, so a problem of respiratory problem, uh, they begin to feel themselves better, they were more active, they could go around them. The first one that is pretty import important is mental health and well-being. Uh, so they try, and the founder in particular underlines that uh, they are supporting people uh, in terms of uh, quality of life, uh, that they, at the end of the day, they were feeling better in terms of quality of life. One of the examples was uh, a lady that uh, uh, she, she was not feeling uh, uh, able to take a plane to go to, fi uh, to go to visit family in Australia because she was not feeling fit. And at the end of the day, she was able, after a period in the social enterprise, to take a plane and to go to visit her family. The first one, the fifth one is lifestyle. It's pretty interesting. I don't know if you have never visited Scotland, but uh, still, I mean, the quality of food is, let's say that is more or less like the American quality of food, not New York, that is very good. So <laughs> they, but, uh, the average American quality of food, uh, so let's say that they begin not to eat holy haggis and fish and chips, but they begin like to make from the scratch soup or vegetables. So they changing quality, uh, they change lifestyle or quitting smoking, for example. The last uh, two, uh, the last two outcomes, uh, they are pretty interesting: NHS savings uh, and physical health. In particular, policymakers uh, in uh, UK, they are pushing towards the idea that social enterprise uh, could save uh, NHS cost, uh, but it's a bit uh, controversial. It's pretty interesting that the beneficiary in this case, uh, they begin to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, I would have saved uh, a lot of money of the NHS uh, if uh, there, wo there would have been this social enterprise before, because maybe I would have been more fit. I would not have, uh, I don't know, an heart attack. But anyway, uh, also health professionals, they say maybe they can support and they can save money because some of the injuries uh, can be prevented. Anyway, it's pretty difficult to measure and to understand uh, if this happens uh, because it depends also on the chronic condition. And this is the same uh, topic with physical health uh, because in a way, proving uh, what it has been effective uh, in terms of, uh, for example, the not progression of the disease. Uh, they are supporting people with MS, uh, so it's a progressive disease. Uh, how is it possible to evaluate? But they perceive that they could be one of the outcomes of the social enterprise. From the interviews, uh, I try to understand also how do they perceive a social enterprise as different from public providers and for-profit providers. 
So I try to understand if they perceive that there was a difference or not. And they come out with do, with, I come out with two different topics. The first one is the idea of mission-driven strategy. So the organization uh, has a mission. Uh, the main goal is not to make money, is to achieve a societal impact. So for example, uh, there is a standard sort of process for people that it's uh, three weeks of physical, uh, three months, sorry, of physical activity supported by the social enterprise. But for example, if you need uh, more time, uh, even if it's a sort of cost for the social enterprise, they will not say no. They will support you. So they, their flexibility and the support to the people is one of the core activity and the core mission uh, that can make you see that when there was a sort of um, a sort of contrast between the financial sustainability and the social sustainability, the social sustainability is more important. And the second point, uh, I call it connectedness broker, but it's a uh, um, let's say in the literature, it's a topic I'm still working uh, on it. Uh, in a way, they connect people uh, that they were excluded. Uh, from a specific group uh, with people that they were inside a group. So with their, uh, they do like a broker, they are a bridge between people that usually they were physically inactive, so with difficulties to go inside the gym, uh, to people that maybe they, they are physical fit. Uh, so they try to recreate and create a connectedness. And they do the same stuff, uh, creating a link and bridge uh, with different organizations. And so if we think that in this small community there are a lot of social enterprises uh, that they were created one after the others, uh, you can see that uh, it could be a sort of broker with this. So from all the interviews, I come out uh, with this very simple conceptual model. So you can see the social enterprise intervention, the outcomes I described before, uh, how it could be different with the other providers and some of the affecting variables that could uh, increase or decrease uh, the uh, presence of the outcomes. And very quickly, the variables are motivation and readiness of the people. So if you are motivated, uh, maybe, and if you are also maybe scared uh, and so of uh, being ill, uh, you increase your motivation so it's easier that you continue your, uh, your track. The distance that is really related to the economic background, we are talking about a rural community, so maybe from this small community you have to drive 45 minutes to go home. Of course, this is, could be a sort of variables that could affect the fact that you are going or not. And it's really related to the economic background because uh, the social enterprise is free for people that are under benefit, but there are people that are not under benefit, but maybe they have like a uh, some difficult economic difficulties. Location, and this is pretty interesting. Uh, um, I, as I was saying before, uh, the gym, uh, and they are uh, working inside a gym that is a social enterprise, uh, could be a mental and physical barrier. It's a mental barrier because you don't feel to go there because everybody, they say, it's a clack of people very fit uh, with the with the very fit, so I don't feel uh, safe to go there. But it could be also a physical barrier because uh, simply from the parking to the entrance of the gym, a person with MS uh, could be difficult to go there. And after that, peer support, because if you work with somebody, a friend, and if you go there with a friend, maybe it's easier. What I'm gonna do with this conceptual model, uh, on the basis of this complexity, we sought to create, we develop a feasibility plan, and in this moment I'm asking for the ethical approval to run a qualitative and quantitative studies. Both quantitative and qualitative studies will have a comparator group, so the idea is try to understand uh, with a quasi-experiment, so col connecting, uh, collecting uh, quantitative data about the physical health of people, uh, what's the difference between the providers, and with a qualitative interview, a follow people with a specific chronic condition for six months for seeing how their life in all the different conceptual models has been changed. There were some barriers to be addressed in these months, and there are still barriers to be addressed in the following months. In particular, it's pretty interesting uh, that uh, it's difficult in a small community to, um, to be able to collect uh, enough quantitative data for enough time. So even if we are in UK, and UK is, uh, 
is one of the country in comparison with Italy, at least, uh, with a lot of uh, database and data and quantitative data. If you are gonna study small community like this, the quantitative data are pretty difficult to obtain. Also, in the let's say negotiation with the, the general practitioners. So this is one of the barriers to be addressed. And I think that also policymakers should be aware that it's not so easy to push forward the idea of measuring the impact because uh, it's cost expensive, it should be independent, and uh, it needs a long time for uh, being collecting, uh, for collecting and measuring and understanding how to measure specific activities. So I hope that in the following years, I mean in one year, I will be able to answer some of these questions and barriers. Thank you. <laughs>